Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. And on this episode, I'm joined by Sharka Chabot, Chief Transformation Officer at Neural Impact, a sales and marketing consulting firm that applies behavioral economics, neuroscience, and persuasion psychology to the customer acquisition process. This episode is sponsored by Ingram Micro Cloud, and Sharka and I discuss how partners are adapting to change today when the unparalleled disruption of coronavirus has impacted the sales, service, and delivery of Microsoft technology, from productivity tools to cloud services to ERP and CRM. Sharka has been working in the technology industry for over 30 years. She has hands-on experience as a VP of marketing for highly successful ISVs, and she is a pioneer of the CRM product category. Today, she researches and teaches behavioral marketing at the University of British Columbia. She spent over 100 days this past year on the road working with Microsoft ISVs, SIs, LSPs, MSPs, and VARs to help them accelerate their cloud transformation, define their cloud solution strategy, execute a vertical go-to-market strategy, or boost their cloud customer acquisition. So let's get started. Okay, Sharka Chabot, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Jason. Really looking forward to it. Likewise, and uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope your your family, your colleagues at Neural Impact are uh, are all doing well uh, during the uh, the ongoing coronavirus crisis. I guess you'd call it. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty interesting, and we're actually all working from home, as I think everybody else is right now, and we're learning how to deliver remote workshops instead of in person. So that's been lots of fun. I have a new Surface Hub I've been playing with without oh, that is IT very cool. support, of course. <laughs> so yeah. Learn under pressure, I guess. That's it. You know, when the way we used to do things doesn't work anymore, we get over all of our technical challenges and our fear and resistance and learn new behaviors. So I know you talk to to partners in, in the Microsoft channel all the time. Uh, I thought maybe I'd just start off by asking you, how are partners doing who you're talking to? What are you hearing from them uh, about their outlook and maybe their immediate activities? So from a negative standpoint, of course, many partners are seeing projects, IT projects get put on hold indefinitely. They're seeing their sales pipeline dry up overnight. You know, nobody's out looking to spend money right now when they're in a state of uncertainty and laying people off. And we're also seeing some partners who've been heavily project-based and used to getting their revenue up front, having cash flow problems, right? Um, The partners that have had a large percentage of the revenue being recurring revenue from subscription licenses or a managed service are, you know, have more steady revenue to weather the storm. But IT companies that are uh, very specifically like systems integrators or large project companies that are very project based and time materials based are really impacted the most right now. However, at the end, and I'm we're hearing, you know, lots of people laying salespeople off or starting to cut their costs, uh, both from a you know resource standpoint and otherwise. But at the same time, I'm hearing sort of two really amazing opportunities that are happening right now, which are keeping partners really busy. And one is obviously the shift f- to remote communications and collaboration. So Microsoft Modern Workplace Partners are seeing a lot of activity with lighting up remote workers Security is obviously an issue right now when everyone's working from home on personal laptops and things. Uh, So we're seeing a lot of activity, both in security, modern workplace, and the Azure partners have been super busy, also lighting up virtual desktops and things like that. So I think there's a short-term opportunity, and I think that's the purpose of what we're going to talk about today a little bit, is how do we align what we do to be relevant and helpful during these difficult times. So yeah, both a good news and a bad news story. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and that that's interesting to hear. It certainly mirrors a lot of what, what v- different partners have told me, the ones that are already more digitally aligned, that are more cloud focused in their in their offerings or their, their methodologies. They have something to offer, even if it's a little different from what they maybe thought was going to be taking up their pipeline this year. Mm-hmm. It's still something that they can uh, either pivot to or just re- reemphasize or more of a, more of a, a shift than a total reimagination of, of what it is they do and who they are. Yeah, I think you use the word pivot, and that's exactly what I would sort of uh, recommend and that we've been talking to partners about is it's not so much changing your strategy, it's pivoting and developing new competencies or finding new ways to be of service and help right now and leveraging the knowledge and the expertise that your team has to solve maybe new problems, right? Right, right. Um, well, I wanted to ask you about 
some of the specific things that, that that partners might be thinking about. One of them is, you know, their marketing plans in the current environment. Should Microsoft partners be investing in marketing activities during these times? Is it a waste of money? Should they be just holding on and waiting? That's a really good question. I think I had three emails just in the last couple of days asking that exact question, right? We've paid for SEO and direct marketing and online ads. Um, should we just stop? And so my answer is, if it's the same sort of positive benefit-based messaging that we often use in this industry about being more productive and collaborating and being more efficient, then absolutely. I think that given what's happening and what people are dealing with in reality right now, some of that messaging, and I've seen it on LinkedIn or other places where I'd say it's almost borderline offensive, right? Like I'm, you know, might be a partner and I'm dealing with layoffs or I'm a customer and I'm dealing with, you know, all these really challenging things, or maybe have family members that are sick, et cetera. And then you're trying to sell me something and, and have this positive thing that's just totally irrelevant and not appropriate right now. So yes, I would say you have to sort of put a halt on that traditional po positive, happy uh, tone, but that doesn't mean that we have to stop marketing completely. There are people that have challenges right now that don't know what we know about how technology can help them right now. So I would say you can continue to market, but it has to be appropriate and it has to be relevant and very specific to solving a current problem or a pain that people are dealing with right now. You mentioned one example, uh, maybe some of the, the messaging that maybe misses the current situation situation that people are, are in and it's just not really aligned with it. Are there other marketing activities that are not working right now that you would warn partners against? Speaking of examples, if you talk about productivity and collaboration, that's all nice. But right now it's really about enabling modern uh, uh, remote workers. It's about like if we took the same, you can sell them the same product or solution, I guess is what I'm saying. But it's how we frame it and how we align it to be related to a problem or a challenge versus, hey, here's my great product. You should just buy it because it's going to give you some benefits. So I would go back to like if we're thinking about, you know, you're used to working in an office in a team environment and now people are distributed around the world. They don't have access to central systems, right? What we're trying to do is avoid downtime or not lose the ability to sell or, or offer customer service just because we've got this technological transition. So I would tell the same story in terms of a narrative around the product, but I would relate it to why do they care and why is it important for them? You know, the other example I'm thinking of is uh, there were the Zoom bombings, right? So you've got I'm sure lots of people saw that um, YouTube video around, you know, poor guy's doing his PhD thesis and he's defending it and somebody goes in and does a personal attack in the middle of that. So that's something that people don't know about necessarily. They would want to avoid it, obviously. Um, so part of, I think, to, to answer your question around messaging is also taking an educational perspective right now and tone. Teach people what are the risks of security. You know, don't click on emails that your mother's best friend sent um, that might have viruses or, you know, be risky. The general customer or population doesn't know about the risks around the technology. And I think this is an opportunity to not sell or market at them, but instead educate them. And of course, at the end of, you know, raising their awareness, say, of the Zoom bombing, you can say Teams, you know, Microsoft Teams has security and, and you know, you can avoid that pain. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and one of the other things it makes me think of just in terms of conversations I've had with, with partners over recent weeks is it almost seems like in some cases, marketers are turning to people in the organization who can help them craft a marketing message that is is more attuned to the times, whether that's with maybe more tactical, you know, topics in mind, or whether it's something that's just speaking to a different audience than maybe the, the marketing team had initially planned on, on speaking to. Mm -hmm. Well, I think persona messaging has been relevant, you know, even prior to COVID, right? It, you know, when we try to talk to everybody, we resonate with nobody. And right now you want to be just as equally speaking to a particular, like, is it an IT manager? Is it, you know, a business person who's now 
I mean, like I mentioned earlier, I would jokingly, but I was serious, right? I deliver workshops and do marketing consulting, but I'm trying to set up my Surface Hub at home remotely, you know, somebody guiding me through the technological setup. So there's very real problems and pains and the buyer or the audience might be very different. Well, in terms of um, who a marketer should be maybe aiming for, are there, uh, is there other guidance you're giving in terms of, you know, should, should marketers be casting a wider net? Should they be just trying to reach as many potential customers as possible right now? Yeah, really good question. Uh, and I'll answer it actually. <laughs> and again, this would be relevant and the same answers before and after, you know, a more economic strange situation, but mass marketing or having general marketing it's really difficult to then be relevant and specific and speak to problems when you don't know, A, who the person is, the persona or the buyer, and you don't know what their industry is or what their problem or pain is that you're trying to solve. So wherever possible, I would, especially right now, I would focus on key industries and I would position my solutions and products to solve problems that are unique to that industry. You know, I teach uh, behavioral science at a university and I bet it's been not even two years since we, since we got some of our faculty off of overhead projectors and using acetates to communicate and shifting to PowerPoint. And the entire faculty of the School of Business in the last four weeks has transitioned to delivering online video and you know live lectures, which would have been completely impossible and unheard of ever. The emotional resistance, the fear, the cost, the decision-making in an academic institution, that kind of a project would have taken years. And now we're seeing organizations make those decisions in days and rolling it out in weeks. So I think, you know, there's a number of very specific vertical industries that are going to be disrupted right now. Education being the most critical one. You know, the way we deliver education hasn't changed in 50 years. We stand in front of a room, we talk to students sitting in desks. And this is, to me, a very exciting opportunity. And by the way, you know, my 21 year old has said to me, Mom, why am I getting a four year degree? I could, you know, be learning all this stuff online for free. And that was before all this happened. So I think as an industry, or each industry has to align and change their business model and how they deliver. And I'm a, you know, we always talk about a neural impact about unless there's a pain or emotional trigger to change your behavior, you're going to go back to doing what's familiar and comfortable and you've always done. So if customers have always used older technology or, you know, saw, did customer service a certain way, they're not going to change that unless something emotionally disrupts that. And the only reason faculty are suddenly, for example, in education, delivering and going through the uh, delivering new mediums or ways of communicating and teaching is because they have this emotional fear of student enrollment's going to go down, right? Classes will be canceled and they'll lose their job if they don't. So the fear of the technology and the behavioral change becomes less significant than the fear of, you know, not delivering courses or losing their job or, or uh, being laid off, et cetera. So, What's interesting to me, you know, in Canada, we have, which is where we're based, we have medical care and one of my uh, medical providers, they, I've had to photocopy and mail in my receipts for 20 years. And every year I phone and I say, have you guys figured this out yet? Can, you know, customers take a photo of a receipt from a, a prescription or, you know, a naturopathic visit and can we mail, you know, can we scan it and email it yet? No, 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 sorry. Sure enough, three days ago, I got an email saying, guess what? You can now remotely scan and send in your receipts. Now, why did it take COVID and this emotional kind of trigger for people to change their behavior? It's because now there's risk and there's fear. So again, and I'm, and I'm not, you know, FUD or, you know, this whole thing is sometimes distasteful to some partners. But when we're talking about behavioral change and trying to get people to do things a new way, it is uncomfortable. We have to learn and it's difficult. And I think that's where we can really shine right now to say, this is painful. It is difficult and you don't really have a choice, but we're here for you when you need us. It's Think of it as changing our language from selling products and offering benefits to having what I call an empathy perspective or empathy marketing. It leads with, you're in this industry, Healthcare, by the way, is another one completely being disrupted. Uh, government, same thing, right? They're having to find, you know, the court systems are trying to figure out how they can continue um, 
when you can't be face to face. So all these industries are going to be disrupted. And I think part of our messaging is we are the technology experts. We understand and know how technology can help you. And we appreciate and acknowledge the difficulty, but we're your partner and we're your trusted partner. And so, you know, you asked about what should partners not do, which is sell and promote and market at people, but instead lead with a a voice of empathy and then gently remind people that they have solutions and a way to help them in services that can take that pain away a bit. Interesting. Is there a first step that you would recommend partners take in starting that approach? Yeah, I think the very first thing they should probably do is just acknowledge on their homepage right away. Here's our COVID response. And that's number one, internally. What's Is your organization still in business? What are you doing to offer ser- support and service to customer? Have you been impacted? Just reassure customers that you're still there and that they won't be negatively impacted by you being impacted. And then the second is, say... And it could just be, you know, a one or two minute video. And by the way, video does not have to be expensive and highly produced, right? We, we've been using our iPhones and capturing video and having our team edit it. And we offer that service to partners too, to help them. The first one or two is the hardest, of course, but with a little remote coaching, it's easy to. And then you create this new capability of communicating with customers. It's, it's a richer medium to say, listen, you know, we know you're impacted by the current market situation and this health crisis. Here's what we're good at and where we can help you and how we'd like to step forward and be your trusted partner when you need us the most. And sending a one or two minute video of your CEO or your you talking about that is going to be much more personal and emotional than sending an email, for example. So I would leverage video. You know, I've noticed... You know, up until a few months ago, I was rarely or I was pretty much the only one that would post video. And I like to do little video blogs or I'd go to, you know, Microsoft Dynamics or something conference and say, hey, here's what I learned this week and just share it with people who couldn't make it. But again, the intention is always to be educational and helpful, not to sell anything. And now every day I wake up and there's different partners in the ecosystem posting really fun, uh, positive, uplifting, you know, messaging using video. So that would be the first thing I would do is create some videos to communicate with customers. And that also means automating part of the sales process, right? Where before you maybe had to do a demo or go see a customer and do a presentation. There's no reason why you can't either take PowerPoint and do a voiceover and send. And that could be, you know, here's who our company is and here's how we can help you right down to here's a specific, say you're dealing with cash flow. Here's a dashboard and how to use it to help you monitor your cash flow on an hourly basis. So it's really designed with the intention of communicating and educating and then leveraging a richer medium, such a video, such as video where I get to build a relationship with you and still feel like we're communicating or live, of course, through teams or whatever. When there are projects on hold, uh, what are some ways that you're recommending that partners do look for uh, new ways to get revenue right now? Yeah, I think, um, you know, finding new customers right now, when everyone's busy and focused on the most urgent and compelling things, uh, is going to be really difficult. So I have been encouraging partners to, you know, what I call is protect your base Go back to the people who know you, who trust you, who you have a relationship with and know what you're capable of. Um, I've recommended a couple strategies. One is, you know, offer your client, your top clients, say a a free one hour whiteboarding session where you get their team on the phone and your team and you can dynamically through teams and a whiteboard app um, come up with ideas on how you can leverage your knowledge or your skills and your technology to solve very specific urgent problems they're trying to deal with right now. The other could be to have, say, there's a partner we've worked with in Australia. They're doing Fridays for an hour, just an open meeting or an open mic where their customers for free can call in and ask questions that are related to the challenges they're dealing with and to create a bit of a community where customers can talk to each other about what they're doing to solve their problems and and a support network. Um, We're all going through this together at the same time. We can learn from each other. We can help each other. And it's not about making money off your customers right now. It's about not just being there for them when the money's good, be there for them when they need us the most, right? That's why they trust us. And 
we're so smart with, you know, AI and IoT and technology, we can see what's possible in their industries. They're just busy trying to keep the lights on and keep their people engaged and, and employed. Um, and that's where our creativity and their real problems can meet. So yeah, a whiteboarding session or an open office hours kind of thing for customers would be a really good step. And what I've seen happen is when customers talk to the vendor um, or the provider, they're finding ways to create a new little project that's going to really help the customer and that they don't mind paying for them because it solves a problem, right? And so I think that's the best way to get revenue right now is to add value and to uh, reach out to your customers and find ways to be of service. And that might mean, you know, if you're a a Dynamics partner, you know, maybe somebody's not going to go migrate their whole ERP system right now, but it could mean, you know, helping them with some of the modern workplace and security issues or building a power app that connects their, you know, core system with some sort of other issues in terms of shipping or logistics or something that they're dealing with. So it might... I actually see this as an opportunity to maybe build new IP, to take some of your people who might have some slack or extra time to build new solutions or new products or or to solve problems in a new creative way. Oftentimes, partners have struggled to take billable employees and take them off of billable projects to build and leverage for the future. So maybe we'll all come out of this a little leaner, but better positioned uh, for the future. Great points. And and I really love your viewpoint on the emotional perspective of this and um, how you can really use that to really direct your efforts. So Sharka, I understand you're also working with Ingram Micro Cloud on some new ideas and programs. Can you tell me a little about that? Yeah. Um, Ingram, you know, one of the a uh, few distributors that has really stepped up at this time that's difficult for partners to try to be there for them in a way that matters. Um, you know, they're trying to figure out how best to help partners through this transition and this challenging time. One of the things I know they've done is extending credit terms, um, you know, helping partners that used to be direct or CSP um, to, to move over and a- add support and service and 24 hour coverage, etc. So aside from those kinds of services and value add that Ingram offers. They're also working with companies like ours to bring content um, to help partners, you know, figure out how to sell and market in this new world and and to deal with some of the challenges. So we're super excited to be building some new webinars and more podcasts and things like this um, to have a deeper conversation and to help partners. And we've got some links to resources. Yep. You can find those in the notes for the show. Sharka, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. I'd love to have you back sometime. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and stay safe. This has been another episode of the MSDW Podcast. My thanks to Sharka Chabot for joining me today. To learn more about today's sponsor, Ingram Micro, and their partner services, please visit microsoft.ingrammicrocloud.com slash dynamics. That's microsoft.ingrammicrocloud.com slash dynamics. Until next time, this is MS Dynamics World, signing off.